riots recently broke out in London, some of the footage looked more like a social uprising than a mere riot. When the riots spread north to Manchester, I took a personal interest as I had lived in Manchester several years ago. I wondered who these people were that were rioting. When I saw the footage, I recognized some of them right away. I'm not Laura Biden, man. You're not Laura Biden. No, no, no. Why, why do you say that? What are you here for? Me. To piss the police off, you get me? There was a despised and feared group of social pariahs in Manchester. Discrimination against them was open and accepted. They were easily recognized by their black tracksuits, black hoodies, and black Nike trainers. And it seemed like this was their night of revenge. And now this is our payback because they can't do nothing to us today. The police can't do nothing. So it's, it's a lack of freedom acting it, like do whatever you want today, mate. I was interested in them in part because there was no social equivalent in the United States to compare these people with. They were completely an English phenomenon. Back when I was living in Manchester in 2006, five years before the riots, me and my friend Josh went out into the streets of Manchester to learn more about Scallies. And then, what is Scully? What? Scully. Scully? The what? Scully? Scully. Scully? I don't know what you're on about. Scully? No. Scully? Scully? Scally. We're not scally. But what is, define it. Um, a scally, one minute, let me Yeah, I'll, I'll show you one. There's a scally. <laughs> There's a scally there, see ya. Yo. Oh, good. Right, gotta go in a bit, camera. Nothing like that. Sorry. Okay, right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Good luck. I need to learn how to pronounce it right. Yeah. need to learn how to pronounce it right. We were definitely going to need to learn how to pronounce it right. It was a bit discouraging. We had been out for over two hours and we hadn't really gotten any information. around in track suits and such, with socks tucked into them and things like that. Trackers and that, isn't it? In behind us. Track suit on. Track suit bottoms tucked in socks yeah. is a giveaway. Yeah, sovereigns. Sovereigns. Cap right on the back of the head up there somewhere. Yeah. Do you guys know what a scally is? Yeah. The term? Yeah. You guys, uh, what is that? That's like someone like me, isn't it? No one, no one cares about you, yeah? That's what a scally is, mate, yeah? A scally is, yeah, who, who, who goes around robbing people on the streets, yeah? I'm not saying I'm a scally, because I'm not a scally. I don't do that. I work. I work for a living, you know what I mean? I'm a chef. So, people like... Oh, no, but you People like that, yeah, just don't give a fuck. They couldn't care about you. They will rob you, take you out of your pocket, rob you, beat you up. They don't care. That's what, pe that's what people are like around here. Rob tea. James was from Widdenshaw, an area of Manchester known for having the largest council estate in Europe. The area has struggled with its reputation as a center for scally culture. Widdenshaw, mate, yeah? I live in Widdenshaw. It didn't help that when Prime Minister Dave Cameron came to visit, this photo was taken. The opposition party and the tabloids had some fun with this picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was a bit very nice people. This was Pingu. Fuck off! 
Pingu lived on the notorious Langsworthy estate in Salford. This area was where the Manchester riots began. Crime on the Langsworthy estate has recently gotten so bad that many people are just abandoning their homes there and not even trying to resell. We asked Pingu about the role that the Scallies play on his estate. After a certain time at night, it's totally unsafe to go out of uh, your house or flat because these people are there in force, grafting. They'll uh, go out in groups of four or five of them all tooled up, just looking for someone that they think they don't recognise, that they look, that looks like someone who's not from this area basically to target these people just to earn their money. They don't see it as a crime, they see it as their way of living. Are you guys brothers? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you consider yourself a scully? Sometimes. Sometimes. He's not dressed, I wear, he's not dressed I wear up stuff today. like this, but sometimes I wear my back half and trappies. Scallies, well I teach a lot of scallies and they're quite nice people so I wouldn't say that they do anything different from anybody else. I think they're sexy. <laughs> so turn me on, so there you go. And a lot of gay men are turned on by scallies. There's a lot of scally porn out there as well. So when do you think it was you became a scally? Like what what age? Um, well 15, 16 or something. When I started going out and that on the streets, with my mates and that, because that's the way they all went. You feel like it was something like your neighborhood influenced you by, like where you grew up? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, definitely. Everyone was like that, round, round, round shit. Some can be alright, but most of them just cause trouble. For when there's no point in it. Like, Stand up bus stops and just like break cause trouble to anyone who goes past. Yeah. The kind of person who smashes in car windows and just pisses yeah, me but, off in yeah. general. Just general laugh, vandals. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just vandals and idiots. Scummy wankers. Yeah. Because they do make such a nuisance of themselves. And for some people, when they're around, it's a real bother to live around them. It's fun. What's, what's fun about it? I don't know, like get, you get chased and stuff by police and that, and security guards. You don't even have to do anything wrong, you still get followed at that, and they're all on the radios and everything. It's alright. Do you think that is a form of discrimination though? Yeah, maybe. But it doesn't bother anyone if we like it. It's fun, it gives you something to do. Stereotype, but the, the English isn't amazing, I must say. They beat up people for no reason. Skaters. Uh, not normal in a way. I don't know, I'm not being like tight or anything, but they just don't act normal or don't speak normally or anything. So. It's not just a like it's not just a name given to it by like out like outsiders or anything. It's like we call ourselves that. Like, that's what you are. What do they do for a living? Nothing. 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 <laughs> Go, to Go to jail. Go to jail. Put burgers. Rob people. Yeah. Would you say that the Scallies rob people? Do they have a reputation as being thieves? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> and what do the Scallies do? Hang a bit in little gangs, clicks. Oh, man. Just terrorise people, I suppose. <laughs> the Scallies started to seem strangely familiar. I felt like I had seen a depiction of them before. Do you think Scallies deserve a bad reputation? Do you guys get yourself into trouble or fights or those, that type of thing? We do. It, 
depends what night it is, what everyone's doing. On a Friday night sometimes, yeah. Now, globby bottle of cheap stinking chip oil! Come and get one in the yarbles! If you have any yarbles! Someone's getting cocky or something. Just hit Let's get it, boys! with your mates anyway, so if they're with their mates, everyone just kicks off. If a fight comes round, don't turn it down. The courts are still dealing with the mayhem and criminality of the riots that beset London and other cities two weeks ago. And the aftermath is still traumatic. In Manchester and Salford, 20 police officers were injured. 155 fires were started. At four of them, fire crews were attacked and had to withdraw. Seven fire engines were damaged with bricks. And 100 shops and premises were looted and smashed up. In the weeks following the riots, reporters descended upon the areas where the riots began looking for answers. Who were the rioters? Who were the looters? And where did they come from? The majority of the people were 14 to 25 year olds running around, hoods up, masks on, just going absolute crazy. And there's no sense that a race was involved. This is a predominantly white area. Yeah, it, to be honest with you, the majority of it was white people. You know, there weren't any black people who, who were around there rioting. You know, there might have been the odd few, but it was white people. National news program, a well known British historian argued that the white rioters had changed races and become non British. He argued that this is what allowed them to carry out the looting and destruction. The whites have become black, a particular sort of violent, destructive, nihilistic gangster culture has become the fashion. This language, which is wholly false, which is a Jamaican patois that's been intruded in England. And this is why so many of us have this sense of literally a foreign country. In fact, the Scallies are as British as they come. Many of them have deep roots in Manchester and Liverpool. They can trace their cultural lineage back to men like Alexander Pearson, who was a member of a group called the Scuttlers in Manchester in the 1880s. The Scuttlers terrorized Mancunians in the late 19th century in some of the same neighborhoods that the Scallies occupy today. After sentencing a Scuttler for murder in 1887, a prominent judge commented that the Scuttlers were like, quote, different tribes of wild Indians with apparently no other motive than a ferocious love of fighting. Reporters in Manchester and Salford watched as Scuttlers smirked in courtrooms when doctors described the wounds they had inflicted on their victims. In an attempt to provide Scuttlers with an alternative to street violence, the St. Mark's Football Club was started in a Manchester slum in 1880. The club later became the renowned Manchester City Football Club. Despite the good intentions of its founders, violence has accompanied the club for much of its history. Police officers and stewards were attacked as Birmingham City supporters spilled into the so-called no-man's land between the two sections of rival fans. One officer suffered a broken nose, a hundred seats were ripped up and used as missiles. It was a throwback to the bad old days of the 70s and 80s when this type of crowd violence was fairly common in grounds up and down the country. And this was a reminder to us, if we needed a reminder, that football hooliganism hasn't actually gone away, that it's still alive and literally kicking. This culture of violence that exists under the surface of Mancunian society rarely gets the opportunity to fully realize itself. In early August, the Scallies of Manchester watched as police lost control of London and pockets of other cities around the country. So just a few moments ago, we had our cameras smashed in. We were told if we didn't move out of the way by some of the people dressed in black and wearing hoods that we would be in danger as well. 
There was no way the Scallies of Manchester were going to miss out on the opportunity to join in the carnage. Was, was Manchester ready for this? Was there rumblings through the day that there might be trouble? There was, actually. We, we, we suspected that it might happen in Manchester. The police put, a press conference, put on a press conference earlier. Um, they, they played it down um, somewhat earlier. I think now they may be forced to recognise they have a situation on their hands. I was, bu I was buzzing, man, yeah. just smashing windows and police cars and stuff. And it must have felt, you know, very commanding and powerful that you could smash a window, grab a TV, and know you could walk past a policeman and nothing would happen. Yeah, because there was too many of us. They were better than anything. You just couldn't describe it because he was in the atmosphere and you knew it might not happen again, so you could just do it then and get away with it. So much to tell the grandkids, yeah, eh? So much to tell the kids when I'm older. Every time I just go back into town, I'll just think, the shops got smashed up in 2011 by all of us.